Welcome to the Operate Podcast, where we give you a behind the scenes look at company building from the perspective of the builders themselves. This is how we operate. I'm super excited to have David Meltzer with me on the Accelerate Show today. And before we get to hear from him, let me tell you a little bit more about him. He really has identified as living by four key principles, gratitude, empathy, accountability, and effective communication. And these principles have allowed him to communicate with and mentor everyone from college students to C-suite executives around the globe. And in everyday practice, they really help him live his mission, which is to make a lot of money, help a lot of people, and have a lot of fun. And every time I've ever been around him, that's exactly what, what I get from, uh, from Dave. He's the co-founder of Sports One Marketing Group with a Hall of Fame quarterback that many of you are probably familiar with named Warren Moon. Um, he's a podcast host. He's a frequent speaker. He's a business coach. He's an investor. He's an author. And I haven't even named them all. So that's just the starting off point. And as I said, you know, every time I've been around him, I've seen him speak. He's also really present and really generous, which I don't say about a lot of people. And I've always found that to be super impressive and very inspiring. Dave, thanks for joining me today. It's really great to have you here. Oh, what a pleasure to be here. Excited, uh, even virtually. It's so frustrating sometimes when I have friends that are so close that I'm used to having them face to face. But thank you for having me and you know your space is one in which i spend a lot of time trying to help people not only accelerate but exponentially grow and utilize their perspective mindset and heart set to do so without quitting that's right and that that's so key and you know as i said you've embraced these principles and you know two that i'll call out in particular are gratitude and empathy and you know th- those are ones that i just i i also personally put a ton of value how did you get to those key principles in your life? Well, first of all, I was blessed because my mom forced them down my throat. Mm. So there's two things that she taught, you know, through humility. We had nothing. My mom worked two jobs, a single mom, packed my dinner with a paper bag and was a second grade teacher, filled up turnstiles at the 7-Eleven with greeting cards. But if I came down without gratitude, she would send me back to my room and have me change my mindset. And then, where I learned empathy was through uh, the experience of trying really hard and learning lessons, what other people call failing. I'm later on in life. Uh, gratitude and empathy have allowed me to change my perspective of pain, of mm-hmm. mistakes, of mm-hmm. failures. And I've, I'm probably the king of dummy tax. I, I tell people all the time, I think I have so much value now to the community because instead of trying to pay your state and federal taxes, I pay a much bigger tax, which is let me pay your dummy tax. Because Mm -hmm. if you're listening or you can see me, I'm one of the biggest dummies that will ever live. And the only difference of me compared to other dummies is my mom taught me through gratitude and forgiveness, empathy, to learn from my mistakes. In other words, pain is not a stop sign. So many people quit. And I started with quitting. I'll keep on talking about quitting. Because the only difference between successful people and others is successful people refuse to quit. They have a desire to must be what they can be. They're happy where they are. They angle to something better. And they have faith to end up somewhere better than that. And I really get gained that perspective through gratitude, which allows me to look for the lesson in the pain, mental, physical, spiritual, financial pain. I look for the lesson. It's not a stop sign, it's a turn signal. It's indicating like a turn signal that I have a lesson to learn to put me in a better place, a better direction. And that's where gratitude and empathy really have played a role. And I had to learn the hard way. I lost everything. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I actually started my journey of learning in 2006 before I lost everything. But still, two years later, I'm one of the few people, I bottomed out two years emotionally before I lost everything. Hmm. But nonetheless, the two first principles to change my life that I clung on to, that I still take stock in, is gratitude and forgiveness. Hmm. So, so powerful. And, and I think the other thing you know, I really take from what you were just saying, too, is this idea of like, it's, it's a never-ending journey. And we, we can continue to evolve and learn and make those turns. And ideally, we don't have to learn the same thing more than once. I will say, I'll admit it, I've made the same mistake more than once. Uh, and, you know, I keep trying not to, but, but I think just even that awareness is, is key. 
it's so key. And that's why my motto not only is make a lot of money, help a lot of people and have a lot of fun, which you stated in the bio, but more importantly, I think the key to life is uh, to enjoy the consistent every day, persistent without quit pursuit of your potential. That's the definition of happiness. And mm-hmm. one of the things we did mention, I'm on a mission to empower over a billion people to be happy. I do trainings mm-hmm. for the last 20 years on Friday for free. Everyone will be invited to come for free and join. But the key to that is if I can empower over a billion people to be happy, I can change the entire atmosphere that we live in. Not in a world of not enough where you're a victim, mm-hmm. where everything happens to you. Not in the world you know, the Newport Beach world, I call this one, which Mm -hmm. I lived in, which is the world for me, just enough for me. Mm -hmm. People have $40 million home, but yet they're still buying things they don't need to impress people they don't like. But if you can live in an abundant world where everything comes through you, not to you or for Mm -hmm. you, through you, for others, Mm -hmm. you actually can enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential without attaching some economic outcome to your happiness that I'll be happy when blank. Yeah, that that never gets fulfilled, right? right? Never. I mean, and that I proved that. And, <laughs> yeah, and I, uh, I I feel very grateful that I learned that lesson a long time ago. And um, you know, as I was saying, you know, we do live in Newport Beach, but my wife and I, who are both from the Midwest, said a long time ago, if if we were going to ever embrace the keeping up, or we were ever going to have that that you know, stated goal, if you will, that, that that would not keep us here. What will keep us here is really being grateful for the blessings that we have, for being able to be a, a blessing to others. And I mean, that, that's manifested itself for me, even in what I'm doing now, which is I embrace entrepreneurs every day in the pursuit of really trying to help them realize the dream and the impact of what, why they're doing what they're doing. And the more success that we can help create, the more confidence that that will also create in others uh, to, to pursue their own dreams as well. That too much of this is all about leverage on other people. And you know, why I appreciate you so much is every person can find their own passion and their own happiness. And you, you live that out every day. And I, I so I'm inspired and appreciative of that. Yeah, I think that stems from the next question, which is, so, you know, where do you find that happiness? And it's mm-hmm. ironic because it's not where people think that I find it. They think that I'm on a pursuit of why. They think somehow that it's passion and purpose that determine that attitude or that perspective. And it's really not. It's pragmatically taking inventory of your values every mm-hmm. day and finding your what. Mm-hmm. If you want to test how few people in the world think about their what, go at what, Go ahead today and ask three people, I don't care who they are, hey, what do you want to do? Hmm. They'll all say, I don't know. Ask them, what do you, stand there in line and go, what do you want to eat? I don't know. The people who are able to enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of their potential and be happy, to enjoy the journey and to accelerate and grow and to expand and to learn, which means you're going to make tons of mistakes. If you live in the learning curve, Mm-hmm. If you live in the learning zone, that means you're making mistakes every day. I give a dummy tax award at my company. I give a bonus for the biggest mistake every single month. So all the employees share their biggest mistakes, what they learn from it. Mm-hmm. And then I give an award for the biggest one to encourage people to live in that learning zone so that they can accelerate, grow, and expand mm-hmm. and feel comfortable doing so, so that mm-hmm. they can be happy. If you don't have that perspective, you're going to live in an anxiety zone where everything shrinks down until you can't do nothing, or you're going to live in the comfort zone where you never grow and you're just mm-hmm. high, sick, and broke on your mom's couch, 50 years old. That's right. Yeah. So, so good. We could spend the whole time talking about this. So great, <laughs> great transition though. I mean, the, the last you know six plus months have just bred anxiety and uh, you know, perspective at the same time for so many people and, and so many of us out there, as you look ahead, let's say, you know, we, it's still unclear when, when we'll have COVID fully under control. We have to live, we have to keep going, especially guys like us that are living out a little bit further out and saying we have to do things today, but we're hopeful, we're optimistic about the future. What is it that has you hopeful and and optimistic over the next year? For me, it's what I have control of. 
Mm. You know, you cannot find outside of you what you can't find inside of you. And what makes me so excited is I know that entrepreneurs are the ones who have always changed the world. Mm. And now more than ever, with over 50% of the people accelerated into positions of entrepreneurship, freelancing, and remote working, that we're going to have even greater opportunities. And so as long as people realize I need to look within me for my own mindset, mm. my heart set, and my capabilities. And what are those capabilities? Those capabilities are what skills do you have today? Not, and what knowledge do you have of not only what, but who, and what desire do I have? And then most importantly, how are they aligned with or supplementary to or synergistic to what's doing well today, what's stable today, and what I think is gonna be important or impactful tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And if you take those three things, your mindset, your heart set, and your capabilities, all three things you have control of and can mm -hmm. find within yourself, align them synergistic or supplementary to what's doing well, what's stable, or what you think is gonna do well, man, you're living in the margins of millionaires. You can smile through this toggle. I need to add one thing too, Carrie, because this one drives me crazy right now during COVID. Everyone walking around from every news station to every person, oh my gosh, we're living in these totally uncertain times. Sure. Well, I'm gonna tell everybody right now, all of the audience listening to me, if anybody knows what's gonna to happen tomorrow, please call Carrie and I, That's we right. will make billions of dollars. That's right. You can tell me for certain, and this has been true throughout history. Forever. I studied history. That's right. So the uncertainty is not the issue, everyone. Change is the issue. Mm -hmm. We are in an accelerated exponential change. Don't waste a great crisis with great change, right. come great opportunities. If you look within your mindset, heart set, and capabilities, you will be golden. You will find the margins of millionaires just like they have in history throughout all the crises and accelerated change. You will be smiling through this struggle. And most importantly, hopefully, when you obtain all of that wealth and health, in this period of time, you'll allow it to come through you to help other people, which is the greatest joy of all. That's right. And I think that that's it, right? It's like we, we see the chaos of this change happening and see countless opportunity from that chaos, not the chaos itself. Right. And I actually, I mean, I, I was having this conversation yesterday and saying, I, my oldest son is two years away from co potentially college. And I'm saying, like, I actually love the chaos that's happening in education right now because it's going to force an accountability that a lot of the institutions have not had on them in my lifetime. And I want to see if they're going to step up to that and say, you know what, we're going to be accountable to providing the right return on investment and value for what we're charging people. And I'm, yeah. I'll feel better if... Uh, if that exists versus not, because, you know, that, 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 but those are the kinds of entrepreneurial opportunities that are getting created right now. Coming from a father of two girls who That's are deep into college and have spent over half a million dollars mm -hmm. to educate them, which has now become a summer camp because it's not directly yeah. applicable to getting a, a skill or a knowledge that's, you know, monetized. Reminded me of law school. You know, I spent all that money to go to law school and nobody can practice law the day you graduate. Mm -hmm. and I'm, it, something's wrong here, right? <laughs> Something is wrong. That's this right. is supposed to be for a profession. Not, I, look, you want to get educated, we got the internet. Uh, right? We, right, we need to start, you know, training people to do things correctly. Mm -hmm. But I also think there's another area of education that's uh, wonderful, and that's at the lower levels, because yeah. I think we are rethinking the appreciation and the value of our educators. Mm -hmm. The best thing that's happened for education at the elementary and junior high school level uh, is that we now have parents saying, "Gosh, you know, maybe I should respect." my fifth grade teacher a little bit more. Maybe we should pay my fifth grade teacher mm -hmm. a little bit more. Maybe we should really see the future lies not only in entrepreneurs of the world, but the great entrepreneurs are developed by the fifth grade teachers. We better start investing in fifth grade teachers uh, because these people are very important and it's not an easy job. That's right. As the husband of a kindergarten teacher, uh, the son of an elementary school teacher, <laughs> you definitely have me. <laughs> You and right I are the, the heart, same. my friend. Yes, I could not agree more. And it, it has been neat to see the gratitude uh, expressed toward my wife over the last uh, several months. So I, I agree that, that that awakening is a positive for sure. So let's, um, I mean, you've got so many things going. 
projects and, and activities. What, which of those, you know, you mentioned your, your Friday trainings that I know you've been doing for a long time. You know, what are you most excited about and all the things that you're working on right now? Well, I'm excited because my whole career, I've built everybody else's brands. You know, mm -hmm. I was the CEO of the world's first smartphone and built that brand mm -hmm. for Samsung and Microsoft. I was at least Steinberg Sports and Entertainment, not only building Lee's brand, mm -hmm. but, you know, Steve Young and Troy Aikman and Warren Moon, Evander Holyfield, Alexa, Lennox mm -hmm. Lewis, Sabathia Ramirez, the list goes on. Then I was Warren Moon's partner uh, at Sports One Marketing, where I built that brand and him. Mm -hmm. You know, I elevated mm -hmm. his brand as a Hall of Fame superstar, the Jackie Robinson of football. Mm -hmm. And the last three and, the, and a half years, to be able to build my own brand and to prove that even a middle-aged mutant turtle like myself, not a superhero <laughs> like all the people and brands that I built before, but a normal guy, you know, who tries hard, you can build an extraordinary brand. Mm -hmm. So I have, you know, my podcast is one of the top in the world mm -hmm. in Playbook. I have a TV show called Elevator Pitch, which is killing it. And then I have a brand new TV show coming out on Bloomberg awesome. uh, called Two Minute Drill in January, which, you know, probably very exciting because it's the first time I've ever produced something on my own. And then I have all my free trainings every Friday that is now featured on Spotify and Entrepreneur every Monday. I have a playlist on Spotify that they feature of my mm -hmm. trainings that are simply to empower people to make more money, help more people and have more fun. And I'm sitting here going, gosh, I can, if I can build a Dave Meltzer brand, I can help anybody build their community sure. and their brand. And hopefully they'll align with my values of gratitude, forgiveness, accountability, effective communication, inspiring others to inspire others, elevating others to elevate others. Yeah, so good and so clear. I, I just, I think how, how uh, clear and precise it is too is, is really, really impressive, Dave. So Thanks. let's go a little bit deeper. You know, you, you've got a, a global perspective, right? You, you are doing things around the world, but you choose to live here. Right, you're, we're here in the same community. You know, why are you based here? I'm based here because um, number one, this is where my family is. Mm -hmm. You know, so I grew up in Akron, Ohio, till I was nine. Moved to Southern California, went to college in Los Angeles. Um, I'm here because the number one thing is not the place; it's the people mm -hmm. and the people that I'm closest to. Mm -hmm. I will also tell you, I'm here because I have traveled the world and quality of life in my opinion, aligned with my values, which I take inventory every day. Right. I can live anywhere on earth. That's I right. have had properties all over this earth, but I choose uh, to live here because mm -hmm. quality of life, it's extraordinary. No other place, when you think about it, I mean, our, our infrastructure is so beautiful here. Mm -hmm. the, the weather is the best in the entire world. Sydney, Australia and Southern California, no places are there better. We have beaches and mountains and hiking, but we also have cities and real commerce. We have uh, a collective consciousness in California because of the gold rush. And I know some people may think this is not deep, but for me, I believe that there's collective consciousness because California was founded by people that were creative and risk takers and explorers. That's the energy that built this, this literally this entire state mm -hmm. from. And it persists. It does. That energy. And I love, that's my energy. I am a creator. I am a commander. I work with people to create things that other people think are uh, impossible. My mm -hmm. whole life has been people laughing at me, making fun of me, scoffing at me, telling me what I can't do and me not voting for what they think mm -hmm. and me not voting for what I can't do or what I don't want in my life. I am a simple electorate. And what I've learned to do in my life mm -hmm. is I vote for what I want in my life. And that's what is elected into my life. There is a mathematical equation of luck, and I'm gonna share it with everyone. It's very simple. What you pay attention to, what you focus in on every day, consistently and persistently, and what you give intention to, the law of Goya, get off your ass, think, say, do, believe, everything towards that intent of the attention equals one thing, the coincidences that you want. In other words, people say, oh my God, what a coincidence. No, it's not a coincidence to me. I'm paying attention and giving intention to the coincidences mm -hmm. I want. Basically, I'm voting for what I want and I'm not surprised when it's elected into my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally, totally makes sense. So, you know, you, I love how you describe this area because I, I totally agree. I, I made it out here about 20 years ago from the Midwest, you know, Indiana, through Chicago, finally got to Southern California and said, yep, this is the, this is the top of the mountain. I got to stay. Yeah. This, is, this is my place. These are my people. This is my energy. I, I totally agree with you. 
So I feel like COVID has in, in given us opportunity to, you talk about taking stock of your values, you could live anywhere, you're sort of re-upping and saying, yes, this is the right place. I feel like most people don't do it daily um, and some don't do it ever. But I feel like COVID has created this environment where there is an opportunity for people to be more reflective, more intentional about it. I've had more conversations in the last few months with people here in our backyard who aren't really here. They happen to live here, but they're not here. And they're starting to pick their head up and say, maybe I should understand what's happening here in my backyard because I do live here. So how do you suggest we engage and really harness that group? Because the capabilities in this area are remarkable. And the, the, the expertise and the knowledge, and yet so many people seem to be spinning in a lot of cases in their own little universe. And I'm trying to figure out, like, how do we harness all that? Because there's a lot of problems globally to be solved. And I don't feel like there's a better group to attack them than this group here right around us. So how do we engage them, embrace them? I will keep this brief, concise, and organized. I believe there's five daily practices. And if we all can institute these daily practices, we can create an extraordinary coincidence together as a collective. Mm -hmm. Number one, take inventory of your values mm -hmm. every day, daily practice. What are your personal values, your experiential values, your giving values, and receiving values? Mm -hmm. Number two, most importantly, ask. We today are connected to the entire world. When we were young, especially in the Midwest, I grew up in Akron, you grew up in Indiana, you know, we were lucky when we asked for help if someone said, well, my card game, you know, someone that's in my card game, my church group, mm -hmm. somebody around, there's five to 10 mm -hmm. people that might be able to help you. My 10 year old has 1500 followers. On average, people have a thousand people in their network. You need to ask two series of questions. One, do you know anyone that can help me? Remember, nobody's a gatekeeper, nobody's resistant, nobody's mm -hmm. stopping you. Everybody's here to help you. You just gotta ask. And if you have the mindset that everyone's a sponsor or a power sponsor of mine, we're gonna create an entire energy or flow of value. And then also ask people, how can I be of service or value to mm -hmm. them? Create that flow. Number three, study. Create these uh, mathematical equations in your life, these coincidences of your life. Mm -hmm. Study things means pay attention, give intention to the coincidences. I use my calendar, I study what I have planned, what I don't have planned in my sleep. Number four, be present. You were talking about putting your, your head up. Being present to me means do it now. 100% of the things you do now, get done. People who get stuff done are successful. People that don't get stuff done aren't. So ask yourself, can I do it now? And if you can do it, do it. If not, and by your, by your values, by the way, if not, put it in your calendar to study tomorrow. Finally, let's all make a practice of ending fear. Let's learn to be aware of what our primary fears are, the Freudian fears, and what our secondary fears are. I have identified, reposited, and practiced, practice identifying when I have a need to be right, offended, separate, inferior, superior, anxious, frustrated, angry, guilty, resentful, all of these things I am in a keen uh, alert of to stop when they come into my life, to drop and breathe into a center of neutrality so that I can roll in the right trajectory and inspire other people to roll with me in a positive way to create more in an abundant attitude to make more money, help more people and have more fun. Five daily practices will create a collective consciousness that will change the world. Mm. And that's why you're out on your, your mission. I mean, you, you get that in front of a billion people and we will I have just need a, a thousand, right? I need a thousand right. people like Carrie because Carrie's going to inspire a thousand to inspire a thousand. A thousand times a thousand is a million. A million times a thousand is a billion. When you're people there. say you're crazy that you can't empower over a billion people, I'm like, can I empower a thousand people? And they're like, sure. In your lifetime, you could easily find a thousand Carries. Right. Well, I'm confident that Carrie can find a thousand and that they can find a thousand. That's over a billion people in my lifetime. We could change the world, you and I. That's right. I love it. I love it. So great, great segue. So a couple more questions. I, I started this to, to really, you know, take messages like yours, you know, create awareness, make more collisions. I'm a big believer in this. You know, you, you talk about coincidences. I like the idea of creating these collisions. COVID has, has, has disrupted that a little bit, but I brought it online, right? And, and really community building. I grew up in a small town. I saw community 
at a really minute level in this small town where my family had been for generations. So I like to talk about things, you know, change, innovation, entrepreneurship, things that are driving change in the world. How do I better contribute this platform to our community from your perspective? I think keep posting and keep doing as much as you can. I think the biggest inhibitor, you know, I've been blessed to work with Gary Vaynerchuk, mm -hmm. Gary mm -hmm. B, who assisted me for three and a half years. And the number one lesson that he tells me when I ask you, how can I build my community, Gary? How can I get people to be more aware of what I'm trying to do? Post, 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 post. Mm -hmm. And if your friends, family, and the people who love you aren't telling you that you're annoying, you're not posting. You're not enough. doing enough. That's you're great. not doing enough. Because I don't think we have the capacity to realize, mm -hmm. number one, the opportunity that exists today for you to build that community. Mm -hmm. And two, we can't fathom, especially coming from Akron, Ohio and Indiana, we can't fathom what 4.4 billion people accessible mm -hmm. to us even means. And the only way that I put it into a framework is this. Imagine if 4.3 billion people had no clue who you were or even disliked you, but just 0.1%. 0.1 billion loved you and were in your community, you'd be more popular than The Rock. Yep. So you've got to post, post, post. People, it takes multiple times for them to hear you, see you, and clear mm -hmm. you, meaning understand what you're saying. Yes. So you've got to keep posting, posting until you annoy yourself. And by then, you're just hitting the curve of the bottom of yep. where and how much content you should be producing as, as an interviewer and as a guest. Mm. So good. I. Uh, one of my leadership principles is about the time I'm sick of talking about it is when people just start listening. So yeah. I, uh, I, yeah, I, I I'm, totally, in. I'm in my friend. Yes. So, so good. Well, I know you've got to go um, two last questions. One, how do you keep yourself sharp? Two routines, a daily routine and an adaptable routine when life happens. So I have a very strict routine, including most importantly, an unwind routine. Mm -hmm. Remember, if I asked you to go running with me for eight miles, you'd want to warm up. Mm -hmm. Think of sleep as going running for eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to warm up to go to sleep, meaning have an unwind routine mm -hmm. as the warm up for sleep. So have two routines, a set routine, and then an adaptable routine according to your values when shit happens or mm -hmm. life happens. Okay, that's so good. So final lap, I always ask my guests to share that kind of key advice or lesson. You've shared a ton already. But if you're thinking about these new entrepreneurs you talked about, so many people, maybe by necessity, maybe by just changing mindset, have been thrust into becoming entrepreneurs. We always know during these times of radical downturn or change that new exciting things emerge. What's your biggest piece of advice for new entrepreneurs right now? ask for help. Mm. The easiest way to get to where you want to be is find someone that sits in the situation or is where you want to be and ask mm -hmm. them for directions. Have radical humility into your life. It's a form of kindness. And if you're going to be kind to your future self, you're going to ask for help. You don't have to pay the tax yourself. Let the old geezers like me pay the dummy tax. Ask, ask, mm -hmm. ask. You can't out ask the universe. You can't ask enough. And you definitely can't ask big enough. I promise you, all you entrepreneurs out there, make it easy on yourself. Have a little bit of humility and ask for help. So good. Well, Dave, thank you so much for joining, for taking us on this ride, for your perspective, your wisdom, your gratitude. And I mean, all of it. It's so good. Thanks for your generosity. Thanks for being present for this conversation. And we're going to find things to collaborate on more. And I so appreciate you. You're clearly doing your part to influence and accelerate and, and move things forward in our world. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being one of my 1,000s. Thank you, everyone. Join me on Fridays or catch the replay on Spotify. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Operate Podcast. If you like this conversation, as a favor to me, you can rate us, review us, or subscribe, or tell your friends. You can also reach out to us on Twitter at Operate Podcast. Until next week, get out there and operate.